Joining us now from Washington, D.C. is Tina Dupuy, who is uh, going to be keeping an eye on things tonight. Tina is, uh, I think the official title is Managing Editor for the Contributor. or what? what Editor-in-Chief. Editor-in-Chief. I will salute you. Editor-in-Chief. Uh-huh. Welcome to the program, and thanking, thank you for taking a little time here to talk to us this evening. Uh, you've been keeping the eye on the, the national political scene just like I have. Uh, if you had to uh, lay out what we're going to see tonight, what do you think we're going to see? Uh, if Obama wins Virginia, it's over. It, that quickly, you think Virginia yeah. is it? You're not even going to have to wait for Ohio. We are not going to have to wait for Ohio. It doesn't matter what happens in Florida. been doing the math. Uh, if he wins Virginia, which it, it looks pretty likely um, from the ground game, I guess they're having a record turnout in Virginia. And as you know, as you know with record turnout, that doesn't mean uh, that's not good for Republicans. That's good for Democrats. Uh, so the people who are actually on the ground have been reporting reporting that all day. And if Virginia goes, then Barack Obama will be uh, a two-term president. I take it you probably read Nate Silver's uh, political calculus. Do you pretty much agree with uh, the odds he's put down? Well, you know, I'm not a statistician. He is. Uh, but I think that he's spending a little bit more time uh, looking at the numbers than uh, a lot of the pundits, uh, you know, Carl Rove, a lot of the Republicans who just say that they're going to sweep. I was on uh, I was on Elliot Spitzer's show last week with with a, uh, a Republican operative who said that not only was Romney going to win, but he was going to win all four of his home states. <laughs> with all four of his homes <laughs> so, right. as well. Uh, I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> he's not going to win any of the places where he's actually lived. So now you really look for those moments. You, you tweet out some stuff that's just very pithy. What do you think are some of the most interesting moments, the most turning moments you've seen in this campaign? And it's been a long season. It's been a really long season. Um, well, I loved the Republican, uh, the Republican primary. I thought that was fantastic. Um, I was at a tea party at the RNC that was the, the RNC, of course, for the second time in a row, had the Monday nights canceled because of a hurricane. And I went to a tea party that the headliner was Herman Cain. Ooh. Ooh, that was memorable. <laughs> you know, right. But see, here's the thing, Mike. When you have people to go to a, that go to a tea party rally in Florida with tri-corner hats, it makes them look like pirates because it's all about context. So. <laughs> So Herman Cain is there, and he's and he's giving his speech, and uh, you know, and he and he says, and I have something for you, ninety nine percenters, get a job. And then he had a standing ovation from from people who you know were all on social security, which I thought was comforting, and retirees presumably who were on Medicare. So I thought that was fair. But the, the great thing about his speech was that he ended by saying, I am going. I was criticized for quoting Pokemon, and I'm going to end by quoting Pokemon. And by the way, fact checkers, you don't create any jobs. <laughs> okay. Some of the most bizarre comments we've heard the entire time. But of course, Herman Cain, what else do you expect? 999. 999. Right? Uh, what do you think? I mean, was the, you know, a lot of people have been saying the hurricane here was something that just put Obama over the top because of the way he responded to it. Do you think that is, or do you think that Mitt Romney was cooked before then? Look, Mitt Romney ran an, the Olympic Games, right? So what better to showcase how amazing he is as a statesman, as an organizer, as a businessman, than, wait for it, the Olympic Games happening just as he was running for president. All he had to do was go on 60 Minutes and say, look, it's really hard. I've done it. I know. I know that, the, that the, in London, they've been working really hard, and I have every uh, faith in their ability. And then everybody in the entire UK would go, we like this, this uh, Romney guy. Instead, he went on television and he went, look, I did it. I don't think they're going to do a very good job, and they're probably not prepared, which had him collectively booed by our biggest ally, our greatest ally. Like there was, you know, 30 million white people who spoke English booing Mitt Romney uh, collectively because he just, he couldn't be like a human being about this, uh, the Olympics. But if there w- was a time, if there were 
a, 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 an opportunity for him to kind of grab onto and, and showcase how wonderful he is at doing things that are that are uh, difficult, it would have been at the Olympics, and he completely botched it. His dancing horse came in 27th. Uh, I really think that's when he lost the election. And, you know, the and the first election or the first debate is, you know, the the RNC has been tweeting all day yesterday. They were tweeting about how uh, liberals were so disappointed. And even Bruce Springsteen was disappointed in the first debate. Well, it wasn't like Romney won that debate. It was just that Obama lost. He didn't show up. Uh, Obama didn't show up. Romney just kind of stood there and threw every single conservative principle you could possibly imagine under the bus. I like regulations. You know, everything that was his severely conservative stance, he kind of went to uh, way to the left of and basically in the debates became just a, you know, a, a, t a paler version of Barack Obama. It was very weird. House and Senate are also uh, in play tonight. The Senate, uh, the Republicans are trying to take it back. You think any chances of that, especially given what's going on in North Dakota? I don't think that the House is going to go to the Democrats. I think that the Democrats are going to hold on to the Senate. That's my suspicion. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that this, the uh, really what it's boiled down to and what we're going to be talking about tomorrow if the cam, if the election goes the way I think it will, which is Obama will get a second term, we're really going to talk about how uh, this is the you know the the post honesty campaign, right? So R Romney wins. Basically, that means that you no longer have to tell the truth. You can say, "Oh, Jeep is sending all your jobs to to China," when that's just not true. And you have Chrysler coming out and and people saying that you know this is. Not true, and then the candidate doubles doubles down on his you know his lies, and somehow he's rewarded for that by by becoming president. Uh, I think that's going to be the real story: is that like you have to at some point be candid with the voters, which Romney has no concept of. I mean, when they said that they were not going to be uh, dictated to by fact checkers, they were telling the truth that one time. <laughs> Well, Tina Tupui, you've got a very busy uh, night ahead of, ahead of you. Uh, so do I. Uh, you're the editor-in-chief of The Contributor. Thank you for helping us people. Can I plug where I'm going to be all night? Plug where you're going to be tonight. Okay. I'm going to be on Tom Hartman's show, I think only once, but probably twice. Uh, I'm going to be on the Asia, Asia News Channel, which is far up on the dial, but I'll be there for an entire hour after the returns come in. And then tonight I'll be on the... Uh, uh, Sirius XM, uh, the left station with, uh, I think it's called The Agenda. It's, you're you're going to be everywhere, basically. You're going to be a lot of places. Well, Tina, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Okay.